Science will set you free. I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God because there is no evidence of his existence. I know why you believe in God. You believe in God because you don't know how things were formed. When you see anything, you say, oh, God made that. That shows how short-sighted and ignorant you are. You attribute it to God because you don't want to find any other explanation for its existence. You believe in God due to your ignorance. And if there is a God, then who created this God? Well, I really respect you, but I don't agree with what you have said. Do I believe in God because I don't know any other explanation for creation than I attribute it to God? Actually, no. I base my belief in God on knowledge. How? When you see something such as camera, oh come on, this is an old argument. Please let me continue answering you, then you can say what you want. Okay. When you see something such as camera, do you say that camera was designed by someone or was it through a very slow process? Common sense says it was designed by someone. I can't say you are lazy if you would say it was designed by someone because you don't want to think or use your mind. There can't be there any other explanation except it was designed by someone. That's what I'm talking about. You best what do you know on knowledge. According to life experience and common sense, order doesn't spontaneously arise from chaos. The more complex and ordered the system, the more functional the form, the greater level of intelligence behind it. You agree with me, don't you? Yeah, I agree. We will look at any camera, we know it contains plastic, glass, etc. And we know it all comes from sand and oil. If you found this camera in the desert, can you say this camera came from billions of years of random events? No. Why? As we agreed, order doesn't spontaneously arise from chaos. Good. So what about the origin of the first cell? It's by very slow process. Okay, now let's see if random events or a very slow process could produce one cell or even one protein. Protein consists of amino acids and there are more than 250 varieties of amino acids in natural. Only 20 are found in the living organisms. The selected amino acids in protein must be left-handed, not right-handed. After the proper amino acids have been selected in the correct amounts, they need to be arranged in a particular sequence for protein to be formed. After arranging in the correct sequence, the selected amino acids must be joined together with a peptide bond. If the process I just told you about doesn't occur, then amino acids won't form a protein. I'll try to make it simple for you to understand by giving you an example. Let's say we have 20 blind men, each with a deck of blind cards. And what we want are 200 blind cards in the correct order, which are a total of 1040 blind cards. The correct order is Ace, two, three, four, up to the ten of hearts for each blind man. And give each blind man one deck of cards after you're done shuffling them. Then let each blind man to lay out the blind cards in the correct order. What is the chance that one blind man lay out the ten cards in the correct order? It's quite unlikely, but yet, it's not impossible. Okay, what if there were two or three blind men? Still not impossible. What if there were fifteen or twenty blind men? Mm. That's impossible! But let's say that a miracle had occurred and those 20 blind men laid out the blind cards in the correct order. The issue is that those 20 blind men won't be able to know if they laid out the blind cards in the correct order or not. They have no goal or a purpose behind laying out the blind cards. I mean, nothing will stop them if they approach to the correct order because they don't know if they are doing it right. They'll continue. And the same idea applies to amino acids when they come together to form a protein. The deck of cards are like the various amino acids, and the 200 cards in the correct order like the 200 amino acids in the correct order that form the proteins. And blind men are like the random conditions that would assemble the amino acids to form a protein. What would maintain the correct order of amino acids when they approach to the precise order? Well, there is a natural law which controls the order of things. For example, I can't program a software program on the computer which can't direct the blank cards to be in the correct order. But your program has been designed by you. 
It was designed to choose a certain blank cards that gives us the correct order and to maintain the correct order. So, who wrote this natural law that recognizes and chooses the required amino acids in the exact order and maintains the complex organization of the amino acids? Remember, order doesn't spontaneously arise from chaos. So, the first issue is the impossibility of this grouping in the correct order. The second issue is Amino acids are unaware whether they approach the correct order or not. And the third issue is maintaining this in the correct order and also recording the details into code and copying them, then again copying them. Could the very slow process produce such a low like that? Russian scientist Alexander Oberon said, the spontaneous formation of such an atomic arrangement in the protein molecule would seem as improbable as the accidental origin of Virgil's Aeneid from scattered letters. And all what we are talking about right now is only one protein. All these complexities are only in one protein. How complex do you think a cell that contains hundreds of proteins is? أم خلقوا من غير شيء أم هم الخالقون Now, let's get to the biggest issue which is consciousness. Think for a while of a piece of clay in front of you. Do you think that given a trillion years or infinite time that this clay could suddenly or even gradually become conscious and aware of its surrounding and identity the way you are, it could never happen. And the same goes for any kind of matter. It could never become aware, never think, but you position is that. Are you talking to me, Mike? No, I mean, you are talking to me, don't you? Yeah, you. Consciousness can't be something materialistic or physics. It's something different. When you dream, you see some things you didn't choose to see, and it seems like reality. Could all these kill come from the materialistic brain? No. The physicist Leonard Maladno, in an interview in the CNN channel, he brought up this point and said, There is no physics explanation. In fact, there is no physics explanation for consciousness. And as far as I can tell, I've never seen consciousness even defined in a way that a scientist can really deal with. Also, Richard Dawkins, the most popular atheist and the hero for many atheists, he was asked, What's the one question you want to most see answered? He said, How does subjective consciousness work? How does it evolve? And what's going on? When I have my own private feelings and you have your own private feelings, what happens when I see something red? What, what is it that makes the redness? What is it that makes the smell of onions? What is it that gives the, 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 the subjective sensation that I know I have and I suspect you have, but I can never know what's going on inside your head? Talking of Richard Dawkins, Ben Stein in his documentary expelled No Intelligence Allowed. He interviewed Richard Dawkins and he asked him about the possibility of the intelligent design. He answered. It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. He said, designer. Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. Yes, Dawkins. This designer is higher intelligence. This designer is nothing like unto him. This designer must be different from his designs. If that design or creation is dependent, the creator must be self-sufficient. And if that creation is finite, the creator must be eternal. And if that creation is confined by space and time, the creator must be free of it. We can see that Dawkins has an issue with the mystery of where did this designer come from. In the other words, who designed the designer or who created God? Well, this is a flawed question in my opinion. Why? 
designer has his own attributes and the designs have their own attributes and you are here mixing and confusing the attributes of the designer with the attributes of the designs. For example, I made this ball. Here, I am the designer and this ball is the design. My attributes, I feel, think, see and sleep, ball doesn't have these attributes. You can't claim that ball think or feel. And you can't associate the attributes of ball with me. The ball doesn't have the ability to comprehend what I feel or think because its attributes are limited and the designer has superior attributes than the design. I'll repeat the example, but I'll replace the word me with the word God and replace the word ball with the word me. God made me. God is the designer and I'm the design. God attributes are self-sufficient, eternal, and not confined by space and time. I don't have these attributes, and you can't claim that I am eternal or self-sufficient. You can't associate my attributes with God. I don't have the ability to comprehend or imagine that God has no beginning, because my attributes are limited, and the human mind can't comprehend everything. This is something beyond our grasp. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and I bear witness that Jesus is the servant of Allah and his messenger. Thanks for watching this video, and I do apologize if I said anything wrong. See you later.